Hello chess friends, welcome back to the chess grind. So before we start the game today, I want to look at one frame from yesterday's game. Um, people left a lot of really good comments on this game yesterday, and uh, I did get a chance to read through all of them, and uh, I just want to highlight a couple of them. So I believe it was Masked Identity pointed out that in this position, the opponent's bishop was just hanging. Uh, my pawn <laughs> was just staring down the face of his bishop, and I didn't take it. So that was kind of weird. Um, I was so fixated on just trading off these rooks and somehow pointing my rooks at his king that I somehow failed to notice that, which is kind of weird. So that's kind of a weird like 700 elo mistake. And then um, I think it was... I don't want to mess up the name. But someone else pointed out that I basically had three passed pawns on this side of the board. And if you have this many passed pawns, you should try to convert them over into queens which um, I delayed until um, I think it was both of the rooks were gone or one of the rooks was gone. Um, so yeah, something I need to get better at. Um, I haven't really given these like past pawns really much thought. Um, so yeah, really good advice. Um, I, I read all the comments and um, on that game in particular, people left a lot of really good feedback. Uh, it really made me think. So yeah, I appreciate that. I read those more than some people may realize. Uh, let's just get the knights out. There was another bit of feedback that I thought was pretty good. Um, someone pointed out that I call pieces hanging a lot when in fact they're not hanging. So for example, this knight right here, um, uh, that's actually a really bad example. Um, well, let me just focus in on this and then I'll get back to that point in a second here. Um, so this is attacked. I guess we can develop. But yeah, so let's just pretend I had this knight over here on g5 or something like that in this position. Uh, no, bad example. Let's just say... Let's say the bishop was over here on b5. So in my view, what I was previously kind of thinking was that the bishop was hanging because there was none of my pieces defending it but it's actually not the right mentality because none of the opponent's pieces are attacking it so it's not really hanging it's kind of just floating off by itself i don't know if there's a term for it um, but i'm realizing now that i've been using that term hanging incorrectly uh, so i'm going to try to retrain my brain to use it correctly so I appreciate that tip. <laughs> um, okay, I should probably make a move. Um, I can pin his queen. I can develop. Uh, I can castle. Um, why don't we go for the castle? I think pinning the queen's the next move. On g5. Just a little medicinal tea break, no big deal. Uh, also today I'm, r I'm rocking my uh, raspy horse voice, some of you may notice. I'll get into that a little bit more. Maybe if there's a lot of dead air to kill in the opponent, Ashkimo. 825. I just realized that I'm playing against an 825. What is going on? Um, yeah, sure. We'll trade these off. Probably a trap, but whatever. Could always defend that with the queen. Uh no, I can't. <laughs> um hmm. or I could add a defender, but I think I'm fine to just trade off whatever. Could probably take with the queen. Wow, so I'm playing an 825 Ashkimo from Canada. That is pretty dang neat. If I do say so myself. Hmm. Can I attack his queen? I guess I could attack his queen, huh? Kind of mess with his pawn structure. Let's do it. I'm hoping he goes pawn f6. Well, in actuality, I'm hoping he just goes queen g5. That would be sick. But he's not going to do that. 
Ashkimo is better than that. We all know. <laughs> he wouldn't fall for something so silly. I think this would be considered a forcing move, since it's sort of forcing his pawn into a bad square. And then, um, yeah, if he goes pawn f6, we just hop back h4, and then we can always pin his knight here on bishop c4, which would be pretty sick. So I kind of like how this game's going so far already. In my simple, humble view of the world. Yeah, okay, so I think that's actually really good for us. So I suppose we do have the option of like hopping back down to d2. But I don't know. I guess I just like the x-ray on the queen. Obviously, it's defended by the pawn, but you know. Mm hmm. Hmm. What's the downside to this? I'm tempted to go b5 and just capture his knight on c6, but I kind of don't want to give up the light square bishop. <laughs> hmm. I got options here. Um, at some point, I do need to start think about uh, thinking about developing the rooks and the queen as well. I think he's going to be forced to go back. I think he's going to go back to like e6 or something. I don't think he'll trade off here. Uh, it just doesn't seem like a good idea. I hope you guys are wearing your N95s today. You're going to need it watching this video today. <laughs> Would be pretty sick if he went pawn g5. Okay, so that was an accurate prediction. Good, good. Really valuable diagonal here. Would be kind of funny just to sack this, huh? Hmm. I guess it would be also kind of funny to get my queen out on e4. And then take a free pawn, huh? What's the downsides to doing that? Any downsides to that? Free pawn, kind of sick, huh? Let's think. His knights don't have great moves, do they? I suppose he could go f4. <clears throat> Seems like a viable move. Um, I kind of want to get one of the rooks out and just x-ray his queen. Maybe just pin his knight here at some point. Hmm, okay. Ah. So that kind of does ruin my plan, actually. Yeah, because now I can't really go e4 and he takes. Hmm. That is a bummer, huh? Hmm. Well, obviously, I have to protect this. <clears throat> okay, my plan didn't really go. <clears throat> kind of failed to see that move. Yeah, good move by him. Hmm. I 
So where do we want the queen to land before he takes my bishop? I'm thinking of like a follow-up move that I can do. I don't really see one. So I think I'm just going to continue with the e4 idea. The upside to this is that after he takes, I do have a pawn and it will be protected by the queen. So he can't just take with his queen. Um, and then I can always defend that with a rook as well. Um, I'll be really surprised if he doesn't take the bishop. <laughs> if he doesn't take, I can get my bishop out of harm's way by going to like b5 or something. Um, if I go check, he's basically forced to run to f7. Um, so I can leave my queen on h7 for one move, and then I can move my bishop over to, say, b5. Seems like an alright move. I won't lose the bishop that way, at least. So that'll be nice. Ooh. Oh, man, I just don't know if that was the move, man. We kind of have to go for this now, huh? Would be kind of cracked to go bishop. No, I couldn't do that afterwards. This would be a funny move too. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe I'm getting a little bit too carried away with h7, queen h7. But, um, so he wants to initiate the trade. And I really don't. <laughs> I want the free pawn. <laughs> Boy, this would be... Hmm. Gosh, what else can I do? I don't have any other checks, do I? Yeah, the knight's defending there. I mean, I do have this one really funny check, but his queen just takes. I guess I do have this funny check here too, huh? Man, I feel like I'm just so close to like winning something here, but <clears throat> I don't know. What do you guys think? Is there like a good move here that I'm missing? Obviously, I can't go bishop because his knight just takes and then I just lose a bishop. And then the queen's just floating on h7 for no reason. I could always attack his queen. That's a bit of a forcing move, huh? Hmm. Sack the knight. I don't I don't know if this is the right move. I also just kind of blocked in my bishop, which I think is a little bit less than ideal. But my b5 plan kind of fell apart. <clears throat> Obviously his queen can just take there. I guess I also did have uh, bishop e4 there as well, huh? Oh, you know what else I did have? Bishop f6. This pawn is pinned. Oh, and then I... Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bishop f6, pawn's pinned, and then I can just follow up with the queen. Mm, that's pretty interesting. 
Yeah, and then I could follow up with uh, bishop g6 as well. If he takes with his knight, uh, I guess I can't go back. <clears throat> oh, I should have seen that move. That was a free pawn. Interesting. Very interesting. I think all the puzzle practice is like... It's not clicking very fast, but it's clicking kind of fast. Um, I think he just has a check here, so I need to be... Oh, wait. Wait, what? Wait. Did I miss something? Does he have checkmate or something? Did I miss something? Hold on. Okay, take the queen. And then... <laughs> and then what? Okay, he has this check here. Can't I just go h1 or h2? So if I go h1... The only other move he can really do for check is f2, right? I don't know, I feel like I just have to play that move. Okay. I mean... Hmm. Yeah, that's a little bit of a bummer, but... Do you have check here? Do you have check and then I don't think that's great because then I can't run my queen out. So I guess I do just lose my bishop here, but I think that's a decent trade though. I think that's a more than decent trade. Okay. Um, okay, so I do have to be careful about his checks here. My pieces are very, very blocked at the moment. <laughs> mm. Maybe I have to move my king to h2. Well, I guess if he goes check with knight h3, um, uh, I think that's what he's looking for. I think he's looking for this fork here. <clears throat> I see. Well, no, he's going to basically get check, and then he's going to get my queen. So how can this be avoided? Um, hmm. boy, oh boy. I think we're just going to have to trade queens off. I mean, I am up four, so that's something to remember. I think I have to go h2. Casey he goes check, maybe I just go for the fork there. Then I have to remember that this is also defended too by his bishop. Maybe I just sack the queen. Mm, this is a really tough move. Mm. Maybe I just... Boy. This, this move is really... <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to lose if I do something wrong here. That's why I'm really taking my time here. 
Gosh, what can I do? I don't want, how can I save the queen here? That's the question. I don't think I can. Hmm. I have to find like the least worst move. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for taking a lot of time on this move, but... <laughs> I think it's either just lose the queen, but what can I take like in the meantime? Hmm. What if I just take his rook in the meantime? I know this looks kind of crazy, but I think I'm just going to go for this. I, I think that was the least worst thing that I could have done there. I just feel like he was winning the queen no matter what there. So, yeah. Oh, uh, which way do I go? I kind of want to go in a dark square so I don't have to worry about his bishop. I'd rather go light square. Uh, I think I'll just go here. This is going to be pretty tough to win now. That was a lot of time burned on that move, I will admit. Three minutes. I'll be the first to admit. Okay, so we have a hanging piece here. Now check. Uh, so I'll be forced to run. Um, maybe I just go defend. Uh, yeah, I'll defend here. This defends this and this. C2 and F3. And then next move I can attack. Oh boy, this is not looking good. We run, perhaps. <laughs> this game is not looking good. Play for stalemate. <laughs> no, he's got knight e2 after this move. Uh, play for stalemate. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> GG Ashkimo <laughs> from Canada. <laughs> Good moves by the opponent there. Honestly, I just I don't know what I could have done different there. Uh, he played really well. 90.3. I played okay-ish. Who played the brilliant move? He played the brilliant move. Wow, the queen sack was the brilliant move. I knew he didn't play that move for nothing. Well, let's start the game review from the top. I thought this was a pretty interesting game. Um, this is a bit more unique than the games that I'm used to playing, so I think this will be a pretty fun review. Okay, so so far book moves, 
So if our book moves, jump the knight to d5. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Developed a dark square bishop to e3. Okay. Okay, engine. And defended the pawn there. Took the pawn. He recaptured. Yeah, I really thought he was going to take with his queen there. Bg5 is a good strategy to develop your queen and win a tempo. Sure. No, fall back to d2. Interesting. What do you guys think? Is it better to fall back to say h4 or d2? I'm uh, never quite sure what to do. Um, I like the idea of going back to h4 because it maintains the pin on the pawn. Not that it really matters, I guess, because the pawn's defended. So maybe it's not really a pin. I mean, it is in a way, but I don't think he would ever push his pawn to, say, like f5, right? <clears throat> Um, so yeah, either h4 or d2. I mean, d2 seems good because it sort of centralizes the piece, which I think is a good principle. Um, so like in this case, what's stronger, just keeping an x-ray on the queen or falling back to a better developed position? Let me know what you think. Yeah, I honestly think this was like the one deciding move right here that sort of sealed the position for him. Um, I had a chance to fall back and play a little bit more defensively, but I sort of chose the aggressive move here. Um, and then maybe the queen trade was just the play. And it looks like I almost had the right idea um, on the next move. I'm just, uh, actually, let me go back. I'm just kind of curious what the engine would say if we would have traded here. Okay. So he still would have had the better position here. Minus 0.85. Okay. So this really, this is the one move that just was a bad, bad idea, huh? You ignored an opportunity to win a tempo by threatening a queen. You allowed the opponent to sacrifice a queen for a nice tactic. Yeah, I, I just, I never would have thought that he would sack the queen for a knight here on f3. Mm. But this does make sense. If I would have thought that he was going to sack his queen, this does block it. That would have been a good idea. But, um, mm. capturing while sacrificing the queen was the right idea. Boy, oh boy. This guy's good, huh? So he just had that sick follow-up move. Hmm. Interesting, taking the rook. Queen of four is an accuracy. You allow the opponent to win a queen through an eventual discovered attack. Yeah, so I think I recognize that after he got into this position and after I put my queen on to e4, um, I just didn't really register that while his rook was on h8. Um, so he just had a series of really good moves. Um, so props to him. So uh, theoretically, yeah, he still has a huge advantage here. Hmm. Yeah, so that was a really good move. Um, I'm kind of just curious about one thing as well. Um, let's just say he did this. What if, theoretically, I did that? Would that just be a blunder? Right, that's just mate. <laughs> mm. I'm trying to think if this could have gone any other way. I don't think it could have. So out of curiosity, no, no, I just did that. I really thought that the bishop sacrifice, well, not even sacrifice, but just bishop taking the pawn here would have been a decent idea at some point. Um, because it seemed like I was just two moves away from getting him in a really bad position. Hmm. Anyways. And this was really bad, huh? Okay, so what would have been the play here? 
Interesting. Rook e1. So I think this would have just given my king room to breathe. So I mean, after he checks, I'd be forced to move. He takes the queen. And then I suppose I could take the rook, huh? Even then. Um, oh, it wants the pawn to take. Sure to get rid of the stacked pawns. I was kind of thinking bishop takes, but yeah. Yeah, so it looks like he just has a huge lead here. Hmm. My thought here was that I would just try to win back the rook um, and try to do like have the rook do as little damage in my little king corner down here as possible. Hmm. Moving up, huh? I didn't want to move to g2 because he had a light square bishop. Um, so I was trying to avoid moving to light squares. I don't know if that's a real strategy or not, but... Hmm. So attacking his knight with the rook. Honestly, I think the game was kind of just lost here at this point, so I think anything that I would have done was just losing. <laughs> He was finding really good moves. <laughs> but the brilliant queen sacrifice, I gotta give it up to him. GG Ashkimo. And uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching. Also, if you've made it to this part of the video, <clears throat> thank you for being a, a true fan and a true supporter. I've kind of been going through like a uh, hellish week. I've been sick. My wife's been sick. Uh, my older kid has pink eye. He's three. And my younger kid is getting mild pink eye. <laughs> oh. So I'm kind of just fully pooped. <laughs> so I've really been um, trying to play more games, but it's been really difficult. So I'm kind of just trying to squeeze this in before I go to bed. So if you're here, I appreciate you. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, man, as soon as I feel better, I want to get back into playing more games. But it's just been really, really difficult lately. So uh, thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> And I'll see you guys.